This example is based on the execution of an instruction in the processor. So consider the following data path of a CPU. We know that the data path involves the registers and the ALU and the connections between them. So the ALU, the bus and all the registers in the data path are of identical size. All operations including incrementation of the PC and the GPRs are to be carried out in the ALU. Two clock cycles are needed for the memory read operation. The first one for loading the address in the MAR and the next one for loading data from the memory bus into the MDR. The instruction add R0 R1 has the register transfer interpretation that you add R0 and R1 and put the result in R0. The minimum number of clock cycles needed for the execution cycle of this instruction. So since we have to find out the number of clock cycles only in the execution cycle, so we are assuming that the instruction is already available in the processor. So the fetch operation has already been taken care of. Also here we have seen that all the ALU, the bus and the registers are in of identical size. That means whatever is the data that is that can be processed by the ALU in one cycle only. It can the bus can carry that data in one cycle. Otherwise if the bus or the ALU had been of smaller size then multiple cycles would be required to transfer one piece of data. Here it is identical size so we are assuming that data can be transferred over the buses in one cycle and the ALU can also take care of the data in one cycle. So now R0 and R1 have to be added and the result has to be put in R0. So here are the general purpose registers over here. So R0 is also over here, R1 is also over here. However, we can see that this is a single bus organization. There is only one single bus which is carrying data within the system. So first of all, what we will have to do is from one of the registers, either R0 or R1, we will have to bring data into these input registers of the ALU. So in the first clock cycle, we can bring data from R0 into S and it will come via this bus into S. At this, in the same cycle, we cannot bring data from R1 because this is a single bus organization. Had this been a multiple bus organization, then we could have transferred data from both the registers in one go. But since this is a single bus, we will have to go in one cycle each. So in the first clock cycle, data is transferred from R0 to this input register of the ALU S. In the second cycle, data will be transferred from R1, which is again a general purpose register and over the bus into this input register T. Once both the data operands are available at the input of the ALU, in the third clock cycle, they will be added and now they can be immediately transferred back into the destination register. There is uh, no need for holding it up because in the next clock cycle, no other data transfer is required. So straight away from the output of the ALU, they can be transferred to the destination register which is R0. So the number of clock cycle required during the execution cycle would be 3.